Let's take a look at the X, as it is expressed in really Filipino martial arts, but we adapted it to the Pacific Archipelago material. And we have many different angles of attack. As you know, I like to use the clock because it's the most universal and simplistic. Uh, but the X is a very common uh, motion, uh, in, as you'll see. Empty hand, single stick, double stick, double knife, knife, is body a doggo, which is stick a knife, in so many different ways. I used to say years ago uh, that the X um, is also like the figure eight, and the X can help the figure eight, the figure eight can help the X. So in other words, you have really two kinds of students in this regard. You've got that person who takes the mighty swing and uh, is very, you know, uh, uh, robotic and, and brings it back up and takes a mighty swing again. And then sometimes you have to prescribe uh, for them a figure eight approach. And that will take away this huh, huh, kind of attack. And then you have another type of student who looks like they're directing an orchestra with their figure eights and there's no mojo behind it whatsoever. And so to the figure eight orchestra leader, you make them work on that X because somewhere in between, you know, the X and the figure eight is the maximum strike, the maximum give and take that you need to work on by hitting things and experimenting with. The fundamental X you might say it's 2 o'clock, 10 o'clock, if you want to use the clock. But then it is important to remember that uh, sometimes you need to start the X at a different point of the clock. So you might say high right and high left. But sometimes due to the, what that other person is doing, you have to do high left, high right. And depending on what that other person is doing, the X may have to come up here. So we have two o'clock and 10 o'clock, and this might be four o'clock, and then followed up by seven o'clock. So you have a start here, a start here, a start down here, and then finally a start right here at the seven o'clock side where it comes up and it comes up. Let's just say the bad guy is pulling a machete a pistol, a knife from that side. If I begin the X up here, it's a tragic or tactical mistake because he could complete the draw. But if I get to hit here first to interrupt his disarm and then continue the X, it's a smarter idea. So, so whether you use a knife or a stick or a hammer fist or whatever, it is a good idea to do. Practice the X from here to there Start from here to there. Start a series from here to there. And start a series from there and there. It's either gonna, you're gonna have that mix between the figure eight and that hard singular strike approach. So come to this corner uh, of the room and show. We've done, we've displayed the two-handed X, but really what's important too is to know that X from a single stick, single hand, because you need to do it in the learning progression, but also when two people square off to do some a stick uh, move, they oftentimes use two setups. They use an X setup or a diamond pattern setup, and that's fundamental, and I don't think very pe many people are explain that or when they just see it and do it. So they'll start with an X and then move in, or they'll start with a diamond pattern and then move in. And so I just for the record, this is what that looks like with one hand. And then they'll charge in and do something. So that X, single stick, single grip, kind of an important deal. And just so that you know, at some point, you can, you can practice switching hands. We'll go very, very slow. For my time, right about here is the hand switch. And right about here is a good time for a hand switch. You can work on that yourself, but nonetheless, that part of the, of the X pattern is a pretty important thing to, to identify, isolate, and know in this progression. Discussing the X, you realize it's a double slash. And as I've learned through time, the double slash is really, uh, it can be done two ways. 
And so if you're using the combat clock, you have a 12 o'clock that comes down and back up. Note it's almost on the same line. And if you're knife and sharp from here to here, you don't have to maneuver your wrist to become edge aware. So same line from 12. Three o'clock, same line, three to nine. Six o'clock, up and then down. Nine o'clock over here, back. And you could turn and go back. Palm up, palm down, palm down, palm up. So this, the, this, this slash is either the same line or a different line for the return. And when you do a different line for the return, it automatically becomes the X. The X, of course, can appear like this uh, in a normal deal. It could be, the X could be up here, the X could be here, 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 wherever. And the X could be, uh, you might say vertical, but you also could say horizontal. And there are nice things that we'll try to do that will bring out the horizontal cut like the insides of the legs, etc. And it also the critical thing to know when you're cutting the X with a single stick is not only do you have a single handed grip, but you have a double handed grip. And it's really battle tested riot stick material. But let's just, just process the X through this two handed grip. It could be this way or it could be this way. I call it this the stick grip, this the riot grip. Uh, riot grip because you have a a firearm sometimes or a lot of people hold their riot stick like this but here I come down at 2 o'clock and I come down at 10 o'clock in the big picture then you can come up at 4 and then up at 7 to cut a complete X and I'm telling you if you get in close quarters with somebody and you start hooking arms and hitting with Dos Manos style material it's really good so you can though we have a a 2 o'clock and a 10 o'clock or you can start 10 o'clock or 2 o'clock. You can start off here low at, at 4 o'clock and then 7 o'clock. And to get all four corners, you can do 7 o'clock and then 4 o'clock to complete this. We're back here in the Action Guy corner again. And we're just going to show you how you can set this up with a, with a, a shield. And you can, depending on where you are, you, you might be safe to hit your fist and stick with this, but you, you can do 10 shots from here and 10 shots from here, and then 10 shots coming up, and then 10 shots coming up, just to put some impact into the two-handed grip X. The X, of course, can be utilized with the push dagger in a very simple hammer fist type motion. You know, uh, we have two o'clock, 10 o'clock, and you know, you've got 10 o'clock, 2 o'clock. This particular one is sharp from here to here. You have 4 o'clock and maybe turn palm down at 7 o'clock. You can start 7 and then 4 o'clock. But right-handed or left-handed, you, you can see the X with the push dagger. You have the X applications with the double stick. We're going to get into that quite in, in, intensively here in just a second. But basically, you know, you can do uh, these uh, single center wally style. You can have an X with this hand and an X with that hand. It's a four count. One, two, three, four. Or you can have these X's that are intermingled or woven or center wally ish with each other. So you can uh, use, obviously, the double stick. Uh, to express the for the Espada Daga, exact same thing. You can cut an X with the stick in all four corners if you want, but you can cut an X and then cut the X with the Espada Daga. You can start doing the X's with uh, both the stick and the knife. A nice simple entry to double weapons, you can do a two knife, stick and knife, or whatever. Is this uh, X on this side, X on this side? It's just four counts. It's very traditionally uh, uh, a traditional sample of you know doing things on this side, doing things on this side. So just look at this here. We're going to cross over. We'll step a little bit right about here. We have an X there and an X there. Very very simple. One two three four. One two three four. One two three four. One two three four. Very very simple. And uh, you can move around, do all the stuff that you want to do with it. But it's a simple X. And for us, double weapons, uh, double, you know, double stick, stick and knife also means double knife. The, the, the foundational movements are the same with only slight nuances to change. But you have that same thing. You can cut the axe, cut the axe, um, cut the axe. Anything 
as you'll see, we'll progress through. But I want you to be aware that the, with the X in terms of blocking and in terms of Filipino martial arts. And I learned this from uh, Remy Prasis a long time ago, and I just want I don't see many Remy people showing this. So, you know, I learned in the late 80s, early 90s, it might, might just be some lost piece of thing he quit doing. But it is like a horseshoe or a rainbow with five events all over the top of you. And so here's how, one way to do it, and of course, obviously involves the X. You start low and you're open. So you close the X, open the X, close the X, open the X, and close the X for blocking. And if you'll do that, you'll, it'll be pretty comprehensive. So, and another way to do it and see the uh, different equation is down here we started with an open X. Well, you can start with a closed X and you get all the bases covered. <laughs> so you have open the X, close it, open it, close it, and open it. And that gets you this action. Now the thing that you have to remember is if you're receiving an attack from any direction, uh, you just can't uh, open this X up like this and get hit right in the head. And so you have to pick a side. It has to angle off so that you can uh, not get hit in the head. What I, what I mean by that is he gives me a shot on the top of the head, bang, it comes all the way through. I do this, it still comes through. So I have to take, choose either the edge weapon side or the stick weapon side to clear this attack. And that's what I mean about not just casually opening it, but you have to angle it off. Here is just an exercise you can use. I'll only attack on the clock at 12 o'clock. You see the X, it's 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. And you can, you know, attack him in many different ways, with many different weapons, two, six, whatever you want. But if you're in that position where you, you can close or open the X, that's how that works. 12 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 6 o'clock, and 9 o'clock. In America, in Europe, and many places, a lot of Filipino instructors, I believe, make the mistake of showing heaven 6 first, which is very complicated for a lot of new people to start. And when I got, went to the Philippines the first time, I saw a very good progression that leads up to that and makes it digestible and easy to perform if you do it right. Now, you know, Sinawali means to, to weave, and many times, in many places in the Philippines, Sinawali is really this, this X count, and that's pretty much it. And then double Sinawali is what we, many of, of uh, we Westerners refer to as heaven six or heaven standard, whatever the names are, the names change constantly. And so basically, we're looking at cutting an X like this, and I, this is a progression I put together because it covers the four corners. I start right side open, left side closed, and I, I slash down. One, two, three, four, stop. I'm not scra back scratching the back of my back. That's too classical. You have to be Superman to, to, to do this regularly and not get your elbow or the rest of your body clipped. I know some superior athletes that can do it. I am not one, and I'm betting you're not one either. And so most combative double stick people keep these sticks out front and not back scratching ridiculously, you know, behind your back. And so here is the, the 12 o'clock version. It is down, 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 and down. What we're trying to achieve is that X, but when you do the 12 o'clock and the 6 o'clock, it's kind of skinny. This is what I mean by this. You see, it goes down, down, down down and down. Another way to discuss it is right, left, right, left. Or right side open, left side open, one, two, three, four. That's different ways. One of them may light up a student's uh, memory or idea and say, oh, that's what it is. So it's just a four count and now we'll show it. It looks a little bit like this. Right side open, left side open, and we go down, 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 and down. That's a set. One, two, three, four, right? So we've taken a look at the 12 o'clock or the downward one. Put as much body dynamic in it as you want. <clears throat> Just go, go for it. But now let's take a look at the 3 o'clock side, which is a very skinny X this way. And we start right side open, left side closed this time. One, two, on the same line, three, four. We've only cut one X. The first one, 
one, two, one X, two X. We cut two X's. At the three o'clock side, right side open, left side closed, we only get to cut one X. One, two, three, four. Cut the line, this follows the same line. Cut the line that follows that same. As you can see, he's over on that side and I'm over on this side. So we have one, two, three, four. You've got right, right, left, left. Or you say half the X, the other half of the X. And so what we like to do, let's move this up a little bit here, is do, do, do 12 o'clock and 3 o'clock as a progression together. We start up top. One, two, three, four. Reset to here. One, two, three, four. Now we're at the 6 o'clock side and uh, the bottom side. We started up here, right side open, left side open. Well, down here at 6 o'clock is right side open, left side open. These, the reverses, Typically is what they might call them when you're coming up and these can be confounding to some folks But here we are we come up we come up we come up we come up You know we're palm up palm up palm down palm down. We are right left right left We have one here. We are low this comes up 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 and up Right left left or one two and then we ask people to continue that progression. We start high, one, two, three, four. We come to here, one, two, three, four. And then we're here, one, two, three, four. Okay, we've done 12 o'clock. We've done three o'clock. We've done six o'clock X. And now we have the nine o'clock X, which is the exact opposite of over here. It's a skinny X, one, two, three, four. You follow it, one, two, three, four. It's <clears throat> left. This follows the same line, this comes back that follows the same line. Half an X, the other half of the X. Lots of people who uh, do learn the six count, having six first, have just a little trouble kicking this one in because they're used to doing the six. But that six, whether you strike you know, high or low in the center part, is, a, is the next series. And in uh, many places I go to in the Philippines, they want you to do this one first before you do what Americans and Europeans usually do. And it goes a little something like this. Down, 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 across, 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 up, 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 and up, and then across, 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 and across. So we have our simple version. Then you have these X's that we did, hopefully in a progression so that you can get that uh, tuned up. And now here's one back to the thing I mentioned before, that heaven six. And there are systems that use heaven six and they take the individual stick strikes and they put it up at number one. So what I mean by that is, here's this classic heaven six. Right side open, left side closed. One, two, three and back. Four, five, six and back. One, two, three and back. Four, five, six and back. Let's just say they're going to do the abanica. They select an abanica version of the double stick. And so on the one, it would be one, 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 two, three, four, 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 five, six. Most of them just do it on one. I added the four side because why not? It's just more exercise and it's over there. So whatever your deal is, you can put it on the one and the four of heaven six. I didn't make that up. Systems do it, but usually only with one and not with four. And I insist on doing it with four also. So if we're looking at this X, in this principle here, here again is the number, one, two, three, four, five, six, and back. Well, it would be one and one, two, three, and back. Four and four, five, six, and back. So we are doing an X on one and an X on four. It's very, almost traditional. It's a modified tradition. So here we are, we cut the X, then we return to the regular stick pattern. We cut the X, we return to the regular stick pattern. One, one, two, three, four, four, five, six. One, one, two, three, four, four, five, six. And that would be a way, another further way to experiment with the X. So we've come over to our action corner again. This is an old Presa style drill. 
in which you strike. Remember, I'll strike on the combat clock and not some family system angle of attack. Strike at 12, 3, 6, and 9. Your training partner will block and immediately come back with an X. And so the idea is to train that response. But there's two ways you can do it. You can block and cut an X in the air, which means I as the trainer would hit and step back and watch you do it. Or uh, the, the trainee can block and cut an X back at the trainer and have stick contact. There's two different ways. You can do both or pick one, whatever. So if we're back here far enough, I'm the trainer, he's the trainee, I strike, and then he gives me an X that I respond to. Any three o'clock, boom, I respond. Any six o'clock, I have to figure out where the X is, and then I give him any nine o'clock, and we hit an X. And the other one is to swing it in the air. I strike and retract, he cuts an X. I strike, he cuts an X. He blocks, he cuts an X. I boom, and he cuts an X. So you can do it any way that you want. The Remy Prince's style uh, in uh, modern Renaissance that I learned in a period of bygone days, I can't really say they do the same thing now, but we had two fundamental, uh, uh, actually two or three fundamental roots for the mano mano. And you might say karate, jiu-jitsu was. You can certainly say that Wally J small circle jiu-jitsu uh, was a big part of Remy's old program and a big part of my life. And then something he called Cinewally boxing. And that was taking the double stick drills and turning them into uh, hand attacks, which oddly enough quickly looked like boxing moves anyway, you know. So Cinewally boxing, jiu-jitsu, karate, um, uh, in terms of Remy, Wally J Small Circle, all came together for uh, the hand-to-hand -hand version of these early programs. Simply put, the X uh, is very conducive to a forearm strike and a hammer fist. So that works really well. But it also has other applications too. And just for an example, here's a, here's a jab and a cross. I'll have to come way right about here. A jab and a cross, down, 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 and down. Let's look at it again. Yeah, let's start from the other side so we can see a switch here. Down, 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 and down. Or a, a hook punch from over here. One, two, three, four. That same one again. One, two, three, four. The same applications of the X can be used vertically, you know, horizontally, uh, in a lot of mono mono encounters. Here is going to be uh, an X of which. We have the empty hand applications of the X, and here is just an X on the chest, kind of a, a stick smothering. We have a series, the X only works in this, the top one, and that is, you know, you have problems in fighting before, during, and after being hit. And uh, this is an after you are hit and bad. And so this guy's given it an overhead, and it's come down right here. It may have busted my clavicle, I don't know but it's pretty bad. So what I'm going to try to do, ah, whew, is, there's that X. I smothered the X, and I'm suffering, and I'm probably going down, you know? And so I'm going to try to, which will hurt if this is broken, pull this in and drop and take, ah. him, down, take him off his feet, and then do the best I can to fight from there with, with a problem that's here. Um, you can see that that foot is up. If he's any kind of a fighter, he may kick at me, which I could not do. <laughs> if, uh, if that foot is up and I don't have a problem, I can cover and kick the groin and do all kinds of things. 20 years ago, I'm, I'm, I'm thrust kicking his head. I don't know the face. I don't know that I could do that anymore fast enough to do it. But I've cleared, clear position and charge forward and get that hit. Every time you project your foot, though, at the guy, you run the risk of being snared up. And the worst thing, if that, if, let's say that kick comes at me so they can see, if they get you in a heel ah. hook, and you're, it's horrible. But see, to escape pain, he'll flip over. So I have got to, A, rudder control and prevent him from bending over with that other foot. And then I don't know what I'm going to do to him, uh, but uh, <clears throat> he's tapping. <laughs> But anyway, you know, it's just a fig it's just a heel hook, common, perfect, wonderful heel hook, and I'm just turning it, and so I can say surrender. 
I don't know if I'm strong enough to break something, but I had a R.J. Oak. Uh, I was just trying to escape heel hooks from R.J. Oak years ago, Washington, D.C., and uh, he, had, he had it on me bad, and it jacked up my leg. So it can be bad. Not breaking, it doesn't break, but snap, you could really disable someone and pull stuff out, medical stuff, which, you know, medical terminology frightens me, so I don't like to use it. But anyway, you see the smother. I am just, the stick is coming in. I smother it, yank violently, and drop to the feet and push. I'm not going to try. Just, uh, Jeff, put your foot right there. I am not going to try this perfect little hook behind the knee because I'm in the middle of a fight. And I don't know that I could get this little perfect heel capture here, which he moves his foot an iota and I'm screwed. Later, brings it up or whatever. I'm just going to smother again in like an X and then dive into him to try to knock him down. And then my big problem is, of course, is he going to kick me? You know. And how could a discussion of the X not include a quick discussion about the infamous, disrespected, etc. X block? Now I started in Ed Parker Kempo Karate the end of 1972, and we were doing the high X block and the low X block. Very traditional, very rigid. If you were off, you got in trouble, you know, uh, if it wasn't perfect. And uh, the modern fighters say, well, against the knife, you do one of our counters to common blocks, you pull the knife back, and you could possibly cut both forearms instead of just one forearm. All that is true. I have used the X block but not in this tight-fisted manifest way, but sort of more like this in real life, just reflexively, maybe because I had to do it so much. And it worked, I threw the guy over. But uh, it is disrespected, but really the X is, appears in all kinds of things. This is essentially an X block, except it's disconnected and moved up some. So you have, you know, an X block that doesn't look like this, but rather looks something like this. The, to the side, very popular and common move. Folks, it's an X block, dis detached and slightly, you know, not wrist to wrist. Six o'clock, many people do a blocking like that. And then nine o'clock, many people do any kind of a blocking, one arm up, one arm down. They, to me, technically, they're just X blocks that have been okayed by civilization, the industry, and uh, just they're just detached and not configured so rigidly. So I want to mention that as a manifestation, that kind of double-handed block is a manifestation The stick X can be used in grappling so many, many different ways. And you know, our wrists become the X, but the actual capture is a triangle. But it starts with the X. And just as an overview, you use the X on the neck. And also, those of you who are uh, knowledgeable about grappling, there's a face crush. And you could capture the X, as we will do in a moment, but you can also catch anywhere on the face with an X. And the cheek, the nose, anywhere, it's just hideous. And this is a controlled device to take down whatever. So you have X's on the face, X's on the, the neck, X's on the wrist we're about to show you. There's really not too much of a benefit to catch an X grappling on the arm. It's too much could happen, too much going on, you know, that they could do to you. So, you, and then we have X's on the uh, a w a wide open X on the hip, a X on the knee, and an X on the ankle. And uh, we're going to try to do, you know, just a bunch of these. But uh, that's a, a quick overlook of using the X for grappling. Here are some applications uh, that have used the X. Uh, concept. And so this time we have a person who's coming in with a three o'clock attack. This was one of Remy Price's favorite moves. And so we'll step up here. He comes in and gives me that and I stop it and this hand kind of comes out to support it. That doesn't seem to be doing anything. Let's just say it starts to come in whack, and I whack it out of the way. This goes over the top, underneath, 
And look at, get that picture in your head of what that looks like. We grab here the X and we, and we take it. <clears throat> so it's an X and a triangle capture. We'll take a look at it again. It especially works good if the, we'll do it from this side. If the person is dedicated to hanging on to a stick, he knows to let go because it's, it's less of a capture. This comes in, we hit, this goes over the top. Catch this as best as possible, and then we take them down. I'm trying to show you that in the air, this stops, catches, goes over the top, under the arm, and I seize it. And then tighten that as high as hard as possible, and then it comes like from three o'clock to twelve o'clock to nine o'clock and over. And once you're in that capture, it's bad. The reason that it's good against the three o'clock attack is the opponent is palm up. And that palm up really sets the stage for that capture. Another stick trick, cop trick, Filipino stick trick, guy grabs you in some way or grabs your shirt. As even if you have a stick, that happens today. Just watch the news. And this comes over. I make the X with my forearms. And we have this capture right here that I now I'm going to bend my body, step my body back, and it's pretty tough. And he hits the deck. We'll look at it from this side. He's got me in some position. <clears throat> By the way, whack, whack, over, catch. Make that as tight an X as possible. And then we pull down and he's in rough shape. This is an old real police trick. I'm sure it pops up in other places, but I learned it first military police academy in the early 70s. And it is using this as an X choke. There's front and back. Let me show you the front first, and then we can show you the back, and then show a, a ground version, but it involves that X. And so, despite what's happening here, we're gonna isolate this to, if the opportunity arrives. This is a pretty long stick. Many expandable batons are shorter than this, and so that may help you sometimes, it may not. You don't hook the same side, you hook the other side. And, you know, pound down, bang. This lays down flat, comes around under the chin and you get this X choke. I suggest you shake it up, select your original palm up side, seems to me to be the best side, and then you can take the person right down to the ground. You shake them up for the disorientation. And a lot of people, even myself, said in the beginning when I first saw this, I said, well, you know, I hadn't been in karate. And I said, well, I'm face to face with that guy and he gets me that. I'm gonna, you know, kick him in the nuts. I'm gonna punch him in the nuts and do all this stuff. And then when they they called me up and they did it to me, I forgot all of that because it's so bad. It's so it gets the windpipe and the blood vessels, and it's pretty bad. Here quickly for you is the back version. You knock them aside, or you come up and interrupt an attack. Uh, police work now. We can't touch the windpipe, but in martial arts. We, they, do, they do all the time, it's dangerous, so you have to be careful. But still, I want to pass this on to you. It's an old police trick, and probably somewhere in the Filipino martial arts they're doing it too. You don't hook the same side shoulder, you hook the opposite shoulder, hook around, catch, and run rough on the face. Get the nose, get the face, there that is, shake it up, and then however long you want, you could put them out. You could take them, you could put them out here without question. Windpipe and bloodlines, making this the tightest X as possible, wrist to wrist. And then, you know, you just take them down. Usually on your original grip side, seems to work the best. So here we are, here's a typical ground version. Remember we have problems, he's high, he's medium, he's low. And with his knees, he's high, way up here, medium or low. The, the, that's six situations that does change this a lot. And needless to say, he could be between my legs. And so whatever has happened that has caused him to bend within reach, that's what we're looking for. I come on the cross side, grab, and get the ground choke uh, this way. Shake, up, shake his head up, but don't, you know, bang heads. And then the, your original grip side, get your feet up into position for that power shrimp to take them over. What you could, after you've, you've pulled them down to the ground, you can raise your leg up here, and I'll just show you what that looks like, as just a shield to either stop him from kicking you, or you can kind of feel that the kicking is coming. And then once he's off here to the side, 
You can, I'm using my knee to, to just hideous, turn this into a hideous choke. Pushing his body away, tightening up, and continuing the choke. We'll come over to our action corner and just look at another style uh, choke, and that's going to be the uh, neck chokes, which we've done, but you can get them on the side. One application from the side is sort of the walking cane reverse grip single hand version and I've seen it apply this way you know for whatever has happened the guy has bent over this slips over the top and then you have an X here to do whatever you want you could choke them out you've got uh, if you get the triangle good enough you've got both blood vessels in the windpipe and then, of course, you could also whack them, catch it, and get an X in this manner, too. So you have, in the neck area, you know, you've got the frontal X, the rear X, this, an X from this side, and an X from this side. The X is used in a variety of grappling ways. And in this particular one, this guy is, the setup is, he's stepping forward and hitting you in the stomach. And you have taken a horrible shot to the stomach and it's, it makes you drop to your knees. You then are side by side with the person, and these are options. Just keep in mind that if he, uh, the, foot were, the foot is not in the right position, do another leg smother and push to take him down. This, this is, I wanna show you just the applications for, when I hit the ground, this goes behind his ankle, tightens, and goes from three to nine. And then the other option is this goes anywhere on just slightly above, but above is not as good as on or just below the knee. Catch it, get the X, lift and turn, and it's pretty bad. To pursue the X, remember we're making an X within our wrist, but we're really creating a triangle in this space. And what we put in this space is what counts. And this particular one, we've discussed some of these other areas. In this particular one, we're going to do an X on the ankle, an X on or just below the knee, because just above the knee isn't as good as on the knee or below it. And then kind of a loose, open X that is on the uh, pelvis line, you know, the underwear line, maybe. And this, it's a special set of circumstances that uh, allow us to do this. Basically, the trainer is stepping forward and giving you a horrible shot to the stomach. If he doesn't step forward, we can't do this. We've got to do something else. So this is coming at me and it, with a big step, and I stop it, oh, oh, and it gets me, because it could plant right there. If it plants right there, that's terrific, because, by the way, I'm going down because it was that bad. Now, all right here, you pretty much have a stick, a smother stick, strip and keep disarm. But stick aside because he could throw a hook punch, whatever. You know, he's landed, he could have a knife in his hand. Um, we are, look at this position that I've had. I'm not here, I'm not here, I've landed to the side. Here's the big three, and I guess we'll start at the top. Uh, this inserts like from seven o'clock to two o'clock, up on the hip, and we take him down. That's the big X, you know. He gets back here. That leg is forward, here, I catch on the knee, on the knee, or below the knee, turn, and drop. He kicks me, right? Boom. I, you have to be very wary that that kick is going to come in. And now, this next one, uh, we drop down, it's the ankle. So he has stepped forward and hit me, I'm in a good position, I catch and lift. And once again, he may kick me. And then you start fighting from there, you know. So you see... It's a, this shoots up, this is a disconnected, but still a pull on the hip, a pull and lift on the knee, and a pull and lift on the ankle. Just stand up for a second. If that leg doesn't come forward, you know, he's, it's this leg, you know, or some other position, he can just collapse on the leg and take him down. It's just when you're in there, side by side, you have this opportunity. Hip, see it's seven to two. Hip and pull. Knee, tight, turn over. Ankle, tight, and turn over. Just fundamentally here, this comes to here and then here, and you make the V that we've seen before. Make this V and lift and yank. 
And then we're either on the knee or just below the knee. Above the knee isn't as effective, but it's on the bone, and we're just gonna do the same thing. If his foot moves in any way, we have other stick applications to make the person go down. If this foot moves back, then we would attack this foot and hook and shove against it. But they're not X's, they're just grabs like this and pulls. We're trying to th theme out uh, the uh, X. So lay down. Another old police trick, if you have a suspect on the ground and the other officers are up front, the guy is not listening to you, he's not putting his arms out for being handcuffed or something. This was the classic move, and this is the X on the shin. You make that tight X and you just rub the shin, and it is hideous. And so this is just another way, and it looks you know, like that on the shin and you rub it up and down. Needless to say though, we'll let him turn his foot out so it's not gonna hurt as bad. But if you wanna control measure any pressure on the leg, this way or this way, anywhere on the lower leg is hideous. And that's another control measure you can use, but those are not X's. We're just trying to do X's. Okay, with the X with the knife, couple of applications that we do. Everything that I'm showing you appears in a course and in a test that we, that we promote and, and teach. These are just these themes. And you have this X cut, which is often uh, uh, an application to uh, the throat. And you know, the ugly word, assassin throat. But somewhere, somebody has to be keeping track of this information uh, so that it is uh, used for military police, forensics, and maybe even self-defense for people. It's all about the packaging. If the packaging is ugly and cartelish and tattooish and mafia-ish and all like that, um, then it becomes uh, a, a gruesome uh, 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 thuggish. But if it's done in a professional manner, somebody somewhere needs to keep track of this. And then this is what I'm talking about. I am going to come up, whack into the carotid on this side, and the classic version is your palm up, turn palm down, and cut across again to cut here and here. And a South African commando guy told me one time that if you have a double-edged knife or a knife that's pretty sharp far up, you don't have to turn it over. You can say palm up and palm up. And frankly, when you feel this, there's a bit more of a drag than there is with the turnaround. If you do it this way, other than that. Uh, there's a bit more of a drag, and that's a commando military style, you know. And then uh, to finish it into a combat scenario. So here we have our guy, and he's just giving me a three o'clock attack, you know, just to, so that we can put it in a sentence. This comes in, I stop it, I catch it, this is not important. What's important to consider is, um, this is my biggest concern, and his leg is my second biggest concern. But in the real world, not many people are kickers. But still, you have to think about it. So if this is up, alive, looking, threatening, whack it with your knife. Bam! Whack it. And if it's just not threatening, which is a whole other subject in another DVD and film we call The Other Hand, if it's loose and flex, it lo doesn't look like there's any pre-planned life in it, but this does, you decide. Where it is, high, low, etc. But you may have to hit it. And so then this comes hard to hear with a hit, a cut, and a cut, and we've got them, but you're still, you don't know how successful that's gonna be. So we'll usually show the full combat scenario into the stomach. Then, as they do in many Chinese systems, uh, they will punch with the lower two knuckles. Uh, I'm gonna hit the lower two knuckles into, this is inserted, into the stomach. There should be some clear path that goes up to the diaphragm and possibly even hits the heart. And so you have a quick combat scenario using the X. This comes in, we hit here, whack here, cut, cut, stab, punch up, shake it up, take it out, and then any takedown that you want to do doesn't really matter, leg sweep or otherwise. Next in our study of the X and the knife, this is something that really brings a lot of X out. And that's an old military version which we're going to do three X's if in training. And they like to say you do three so you can actually get two. You know, you do two so you can actually get one, depending on the circumstances. But that knife is going to come in at the three o'clock side. Again, I stop it, I catch it, 
Maybe I hit this other hand. We're going to take the cut on the throat, the cut on the bicep, and a cut on the forearm. And so we have X throat, X bicep, X forearm, and then a, a strip and send finish. So here comes our three o'clock attack, which I stop it, catch it, hit this if I have to. There's the X on the throat, the X on the bicep, which, you know, you could cut anywhere on the bicep, but if that's exposed, a lot of times you have that nice shot right there that disconnects all those tendons. And if we're still up and ready, you have a powerful X on the forearm. And then to get this disarm, I'm going to, to get this disarm, I'm just going to stick the tip of the knife into the palm and shove it out to get this. Now, if you stick the knife in too far, it's going to be in the middle of the hand. There'll be a lot of grit and guts and stuff in the way, you know, to, to, to get clear. But if you just sort of scrape it out, you could possibly disarm the knife. Sometimes you can use something very, very soft, like a roll-up piece of paper, to really beat your friend. With a reverse grip, in terms of this Assassin X, reverse grip is very popular, but all grips should be popular, either saber or reverse, many things to do with all of them. This comes in, you know, we stop it, we catch it, we hit over here. If we're gonna take on this throat, uh, that comes in and gets the cut there, and then gets the cut there. Then I suggest, you know, with the saber grip, we came in and got uh, below the rib cage, but I would say get this cut, get this cut, and drive that into the clavicle notch deeply with a trip and shove them down to the ground. So it looks kind of like this here, cut, cut, and stab. If we go, t if we go too deep into here, you get stuck in the guts and the stuff. So that's just something you have to realize, and you could rip this out, or if it gets, pull it out that way, but it's only, you know, a surface rip that comes here and comes here, but that shot is a powerful hammer fist into the clavicle notch. I am not a big fan of the clavicle notch attack. I think they sell it to you for a dollar. It may only be worth, you know, 25, 30 cents, especially in comparison to other stuff you could do. But if you stick a big ass knife down somebody's clavicle notch, you're cutting a lot of stuff and it's just different. A knife is different than poking two fingers in there. So take a bunch of this information and uh, use it as a theme in a class or a seminar. Uh, you can uh, collect a lot of stuff, the X, keep adding to it and uh, have a very interesting workout with the study of the Filipino or PAC-X.